Welcome fellow combatants against grey plastic. Today we embark on a heroic journey of painting up a Space Marine Company champion. We'll be focusing on the mesmerizing glow of the power sword. We'll also be looking to add some reflections to his shining golden helmet because no self-respecting son of Sanguinius ever skips polish day. Before we dive in, don't forget to like and subscribe, and also join the Discord via the link in the description to get in touch with other gamers and painters from all corners of the galaxy. I started off building as per the instructions before I delved into my Blood Angels bits box in search of the perfect head and shoulder pad combination to give our Space Marine Champion a unique and memorable character. I opted for a Mark VII helmet, because obviously Mark VII is iconic Space Marine, and also this cool shoulder pad featuring a Blood Angels chalice. As this is a mini marine piece, the arm needed some snipping to fit the shoulder pad onto our Primaris sized champion. And because we've got a firstborn helmet on this guy, I wanted to lean into some old school Warhammer with a back banner. Back banners! I grabbed one of the Legion banners from the Horus Heresy Age of Darkness set that I had spare. I then made it creepy and 40k with the addition of a little bone reliquary. Sanguinius must have about 100 different finger bones by this point, and a death mask from the Librarian Dreadnought sprue, which fits perfectly into this little circle on the banner. With building done and dusted, I moved on to painting, painting up the red armour in my usual way. Check out the video card in the top right hand corner if you'd like to see more about that, as today we're going to be focusing on the unique painting style that I decided to do the rest of this model in. Inspired by the work of El Miniaturista, links in the description, I wanted to evoke some of the epic object source lighting that he features in his posts on My Champion. I blocked in the gold details including the helmet with Retributor armour. People hate on Games Workshop metallics, but this paint is an absolute staple for me, I love the tone, and it goes on really nice and smoothly. Next let's give a light source for some of those reflections. The power sword is going to be the main source of light and the main thing I want to draw your eye to on this model, so I base coat it with a very light blue, sky blue from Vallejo. To this mix I added gloss white, I'm using gloss paints here in an attempt to give a little bit more reflectivity, and I mixed this in with the sky blue using this around some of the finer edges as well as the sort of power source towards the bottom of the blade. This is going to be the area that's got the most concentrated energy so I want it to be the brightest. I first attempted to highlight the gold helmet using the same colours as the power sword. However, it didn't look quite right. Rather than just applying the blue tones straight over the gold armour, I instead mixed some of my blue tones in with my gold, using this as my highlight colours. I started off by mixing the sky blue with my retributor armour, and used this to apply towards the sharpest edges. I next did the same with medium blue, applying this in a strip towards the sides and glazing the join to make sure that they map up correctly. Now it's really interesting, I think I've got a long way to go on this technique, but it's a really cool first start to see that you can actually mix metallic paints with non-metallic paints to get the kind of reflections and the light sources that you might want. Definitely something that I'll be exploring more in future. I then mixed gloss white in with my Retributor armour, using this in a central line to mark the brightest reflective point in the centre of the armour. I also used this colour around the very sharp edges closest to the blade. One of the key things to note about painting this kind of object source lighting is that it's most effective when you have a very very dark contrasting other side of the model. So that's what we're going to focus on next, starting with the helmet. I applied Agrax Earthshade pretty much all over this side, really trying to dull it down so that it really gives the impression that the power sword is shining on the face and the other half is deeply in shadow. I did want to give a small point of interest though to this side, so I also applied some chrome to the eye lens and then some red mixed in with the chrome. I was really on a mixing with metallics vibe on this project and I used that in order to give an eye lens that was glowing on the other side. I did eventually apply this to the blue side of the helmet as well, um, but it's much less prominent there because the shining light of the power sword is really dominating that red eye lens. I glazed a little bit of medium blue over the power sword just to kind of tie everything together before going into the next step, which is going to be spreading the glow to other areas of the model. 
For this, I applied medium blue in a thin consistency, which I applied to a sort of large pool, imagining where it's going to be hitting the armor of the Space Marine. Now, not all of the areas are going to be shaded with blue. It's only going to be the tops of the arms, the fronts of the shoulders, and eventually the back banner, though you may have noticed that this got snapped off during my painting process. Don't worry, we'll be adding it in in a moment. I then applied sky blue thinned down on the sharp edges, again, focusing on where it's going to be closest to the power sword or the sharpest edges where it's going to be most reflective. At this point, it doesn't all tie together that well, so what I needed to do was blend everything together, and I did this via glazes. I glazed dark blue and red so that I can really see the transition between where the glow ends and the red armor begins. Now, I mentioned the back banner fell off. It's time to sort that out, and we're going to start by painting Retributor armor for all the gold parts. I also painted black green onto the back banner to really give the fourth company colors so he matches with my banner bearer. Um, however, I will say that later on in the process, this gets pretty much completely covered up. There's a couple of extra details on this back banner, including the bones, which again, I painted with brown sand and then a mix of brown and off-white to highlight. And I painted the cloak on the front with a flat brown. Now, what I'm aiming to do here is on the darker half of the model, paint probably a shade darker than I normally would when painting these areas. So instead of using a sort of bone color for the parchments and the cloak, I'm instead using a slightly darker brown. For example, for the leather on the pouch at the back, I used Rhinox Hide and Black. I used a black metallic paint from Vallejo instead of my usual beloved gunmetal. Sorry, gunmetal, not your day today. I then decided to take it a step further and glazed black over the shadowed parts of the model. When looking at the front of the model, I want to be able to focus a little bit on the cloak, even though it's not necessarily going to have the highlights from the power sword. So I decided to bring this up a little bit in terms of its lighting. I used brown sand and off-white for the cloak highlights, and then glazed over with thinned down brown sand just to tie everything together and make it seem satin smooth. I added some additional whites for some more highlights and then used some more dark blue in order to reflect just a little bit, particularly focused on the reflective elements underneath the sort of midriff of this guy. So most of the light is hitting the tops of his arms, but anything that's kind of leaking through underneath is mostly going to be focused on the reflective metallic areas. To this, I also added sky blue, but this is very sparingly applied only to those sharp corners. We're going to put the paintbrush down, go back to our airbrush in order to finish off the back banner. I thinned down medium blue to apply it to the back banner. Here is the point where the green that I had previously put on there is pretty much completely obscured. I then added sky blue into my mix in the airbrush, applying this in a sort of centralized area. At this point, there was a bit of overspray that had gone onto my helmet, so I used a wet brush to just quickly get rid of those tiny little airbrush particles. This seemed to do really well, so I'll use this in future when I'm trying to keep a clean edge when I'm airbrushing. Now behind the head, there's going to be a bit of a shadow because the power sword is obstructed and bouncing off of the helmet, and then you have the area on the back banner. I decided to define the shadow of the head by using medium blue and adding a little bit of black as well so that I can have a real defined shadow at the bottom. With a little bit more light blue added to the mix in an even more centralized location, we're done with airbrushing on the banner. Now at this point, I decided that I wanted even more shadow, so I put some black in my airbrush and blasted the shadowed areas with this. Because I've now lost a lot of my mid-tones, especially the red armor, I came back in with my airbrush with some Mephiston Red and then some Evil Sun Scarlet, and then used this as well as blending with a paintbrush to re-establish a line of that red color just to the edge of where the blue light runs out. I'm not sure whether this is actually correct in terms of real world lighting, but it looks quite cool and it definitely makes sure that we know this is a Blood Angels champion. For final details, I did some black lining around the face. One of the key elements I'm told to getting good reflective surfaces is high contrast. So I needed to make sure that the areas where there was no light on the helmet were as dark as possible, contrasted with the very bright gloss white areas on the edges of the helmet. Speaking of those highlights, I used a few final touch-ups of gloss white around the gorget, around his neck, and the edges of the blade. And so here is the completed company champion.
This was such a fun project and really got my brain working trying to do a few new skills. Um, again, links to El Mini Turista, who is the real inspiration for this. Uh, his Instagram is just full of these amazing OSLs. He's got like Patreon and all kinds of things. So have a look at those links if you are interested in seeing someone do this a lot better than I can. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe, like, do all the things down below. And until the next one, my name has been Ollie. This has been my hobby. And I'll see you next time.